What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Johnny Mac here. Just wanted to give you a heads up that if you are looking for a community that is open to discussion as far as mentorship, conservation, the wild, becoming a better person, and all of that, there is a group for you on Facebook, and it is called Soul Seekers. Soul Seekers, we are all about making ourselves a better person. We're all about making sure hunting lasts for generations to come and encouraging people to get plugged in. Whether you are someone who has something to give or someone who needs to soak it up like a sponge, this is a community for you, and I encourage you. I strongly encourage you that if you're on Facebook to join Soul Seekers, and if you're not on Facebook, hop on there just for that group. It is only going to be as powerful as we all make it. And so just remember that life happens for you. It doesn't happen to you and that you can't outgive good. You can't outgive good people. I want you to understand that and I want you to believe it because when we believe that and we lead with courage and we lead with intention, lives are changed. Lives are transformed. Just like on this podcast, Transformation Through Primal Adventure. Be blessed. Enjoy this episode. Talk soon. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Soulful Hunter podcast. I'm your host, Johnny Mack. Through this podcast, I'm on a mission to transform lives through primal adventure and to spread my mission of mentorship is conservation. This podcast is powered by Washington Backcountry, a resource for all hunters, both new and old. To find out more about Washington Backcountry, go to wabackcountry.com or search for Washington Backcountry on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. The Soulful Hunter podcast is also proudly presented by TNK Hunting Gear, if you haven't heard about TNK, then it's about time you do. I've been using TNK gear out in the field and on hunts and have fallen in love with their stuff. TNK is veteran owned and 100% made in America using only American made products. All their gear is covered under a lifetime warranty with no questions asked. If it breaks or fails, they will fix it or replace it for free. TNK is your resource for bino harnesses, bow slings, and a lot more amazing gear. For more information about TNK hunting gear, go to TNK hunting. Dot com or search for them on Facebook and Instagram. I hope you guys enjoy this episode. Read them on and stay soulful. The Soulful Hunter podcast is also proudly presented by the Crazy Elk Company. Based out of the state of Washington with products made in America, they are providing solutions with gear to problems you didn't even know you had. Their tag wall is one of those solutions and I had the pleasure of using it on all of my hunts this last year and it is now a mainstay in my kill kit. The tag wall is a water-resistant zippered pouch that comes with its own reusable zip ties to safely and securely store your notch tag for quick and easy access. For more information, go to crazyelkcompany.com and use the code SOULFUL with a capital S to save 20% at checkout. Be blessed, everyone, and as always, stay soulful. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode yeah. of the Soulful Hunter Podcast. I'm your host, Johnny Mack, and today I got just a killer warrior episode for all you people out there seeking freedom in your life to set your soul on fire and just really to nourish and take care of yourself. Um, because you always heard me talk about on this podcast, if you don't love yourself, how are you ever going to love the world and love your community and love your family and everything? So today, I got a returning guest on, and that is Johnny L. Sasser from the Art of Masculinity podcast, a former warrior in the American military, but just a warrior in life. And today, without, like, I'm so joyful even to think about sharing the microphone with my brother, Lucas Mack, the host of the Golden Rule Revolution podcast. Like, this is a real treat. Lucas is my hero. Johnny is somebody who is a brother in arms and a brother in spirit and soul. And today I got them on to talk to all of you guys about their new course that they're launching called The Dawn of Masculinity. And so we're going to dive into this. And uh, what they, what they want to do, and I love Luke and Johnny's talk, is they always say, we want to be liberator of souls. And I was like, dude, there's no better way than to get you on this, the Soulful Hunter podcast and, and really liberate. So, guys, thank you so much for joining me for an episode. Brother, let's go. 
Let's I love go. this, man. Let's bring it. All right. So, Luke. Um, yeah, thank you, brother. Thank you for having us. Yes, dude. It's always my pleasure. That's why I think podcasting is so much fun is because all of a sudden this community that you build when you start diving into conversations with people, you end up having connections like all over the world that if you ever really wanted to call upon somebody or need something or could go for support, there's these people all over. Johnny, you're over in South Carolina. Lucas, he's down in Seattle. And here we are joining in, in unity and just really making a difference. I love it. Guys, tell the listeners what this course of the dawn of masculinity is all about and why humans and men need it. We, you know, Johnny, I had you on the podcast about your episode just a year ago, roughly now. Lucas, you've never been on here. You guys met. Luke, I'm going to throw it to you first. Take, take it away. Why is, is the dawn of masculinity just so important and needed in times like these in this world? Well, I think, uh, first of all, I love you, brother. <laughs> I love you, too. It's the first time it's, I've said literal brother, and you should like, call everyone brother. So um, it's fun to, fun to be on. Uh, with everything going on, First of all, before 2020, men had the highest suicide rate uh, of all suicides in the United States. Seven, 78% or 8 out of 10 suicides in the United States were men. And in 2020, they haven't released the full stats, but suicides are up 30% in 2020 from 2019. Wow. And just think about how many men exited this planet because they didn't find a way out. They didn't they didn't see light. They didn't have hope. And they had felt despair, stuck, broken, alone, not not, uh, not having the, the context to break away from the darkness. And so this course, The Art of Masculinity, is saying masculine, being masculine, being a man, a leader, a, a warrior, a protector, a provider, all these adjectives that we ascribe to be starts with the sovereign self it starts with going within and really knowing ourselves knowing our true identity and this course i mean it was fun building it with johnny it's like it it starts with healing it ends with powerful sovereignty and it's this hero's journey that we're taking guys on on and it's not woo woo it's not patty cake we're not gonna we're not making anyone feel weird or plain soft we're, we're straight up sharing our stories with our perspective walking side by side with which uh with each of these guys coming on locking arms and saying do you want to be free if the answer is yes then let's go i love that and one question i have is define sovereignty because I feel like that is a word in the society today that people don't know what it means. Mm. I define sovereignty as this. When I say no, it is no. And when I say yes, it is yes. And having the ability to utter such words from our, from our true self, not being a people pleaser, not trying to always hustle to get something else, but to come in and say, Am I consciously choosing every feeling that I am experiencing, every relationship that I have in my life, every day that I spend? Am I choosing it or am I in the place of have to, victim to? And when I say, when I say no is no, I don't think we can actually say yes. Our yeses mean nothing as men. It's yes, 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 until you can say no. Because the yes meant nothing in the first place. If you don't have the contrast to say actually what a no is, what that boundary is, you know, they say fences make good neighbors. There's a reason. You have to have the contrast between what is and what is not, what I choose, what I have been forced upon me, what I'm obligated from my family, my name, the religion, the, the belief structures, the worldviews, all this bullshit that every swirling energy force comes into our life and we're just like constantly just <laughs> the recipients of all this barrage of low vibe energy. And as men, we want to be free. We want to roam the range. We want to be the, the bearded savage like Johnny Alsasser with his long 
blowing me. And, you know, oh man. So that's what I think sovereignty is. It's that there's no one above me and there's no one below me. And I don't see anyone lesser or greater than myself. And I am here to remind everyone who feels low to rise and to, rem- to remind everyone that is riding high that there is no unity without humility. Yeah, sovereignty is kind of like the I am statement, right? Just I am. I am present. Here, here we are just mm. identifying your, your, you know, I, growing up, bro, and you know this, and Johnny, I'm going to come to you here in just a second, but I just want to talk about this because growing up, I always was scared of superiors. I was, whether it was scared of an adult, scared of a boss, scared of uh, a corporation, police officers, like anyone who, for some reason, I was squished down in my manhood, in my masculinity, that I didn't feel equal. And yet, here I am, a white male, full of all this privilege, and the world is my oyster, and I get to own all this stuff, and yet in my own heart of hearts, I didn't feel like I had a voice. I didn't feel like I had a platform. I didn't feel like someone says, who's Johnny Mac? He's like, well, I, I don't know. And that is a crumbling of society. You know, Abraham Lincoln says, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. So if you don't stand for yourself, how can you stand for anything? And I find this really fascinating that sovereignty is the I am. Mm -hmm. You are. And Luke, you've talked to me a lot about I am enough. And I want to reiterate that to everyone else is like, you are enough and you can be more if you want Mm -hmm. and to identify what it is that you want. So I love that. This is a, (laughs) this is a powerful podcast already. I'm like, we're, we're five minutes in. It's like, Oh baby, here we go. (laughs) So, Johnny, I want to throw it to you because yeah. you are the art of masculinity. You, you, that's what you stand for, what you, what you coach people on and, and all this. How is it that you take the art of masculinity, you combine it with the golden rule revolution of treating people like people and nothing less, <laughs> and smash it together for the dawn of masculinity? Like, how did you meet Lucas and how did this all come about? Uh, brother, that's a great question. And um, we actually met through a mutual friend, Lauren Salon, who's an amazing human being in her own right. But she introduced us mm-hmm. and Lucas and I ended up uh, trading podcasts together and then just grew a, a really, really in-depth brotherly bond out of that. And it's just flourished since then. That's how obviously I met you as well. Um, but at the end of the day, when you look at both what Lucas and I are doing and you put them together to create the dawn of masculinity, the thing is, is that a confident man can't really truly be confident if he's not willing to uphold the golden rule and treat others as he deserves, as he feels he should be treated. Right. Mm -hmm. And so men in their own right to even be that, that positive version of masculinity have to coincide and coalesce with the golden rule. They have to respect not only the people, but the things on this planet as well, which is what you actually integrate as well, Johnny, with what, how you teach men uh, hunting through conservation and mentorship, right? So like when you incorporate all those things, you're treating this world with respect and you're treating the people with respect. And that's where a true man can really embody himself. But a true man can't step into any of those forms until he knows who he is. And that's where the dawn of masculinity comes in. We're at this pivotal point within society that evolution is necessary. It's not saying that what men are today is bad. It's saying that what men are today is not enough for the way this world is changing. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that men have to soften up, right, to, to coexist in the world today. That's not what we're saying either. There is a perfect balance between this positive version of masculinity, how we show up in this world in our strength and our power and our glory, but also in touch with that side of ourselves where we can be vulnerable and support others and love one another and bring everybody else up with us. That's what we never had. And that's where this evolution the masculinity is coming in. This is a new dawn, truly a new dawn for masculinity because right now we have guys on two sides of the fence. I had a conversation the other 
night with somebody, there's men who uh, are from the old ways, right? The old school ways. We, we are all very aware of how we were brought up and how men before that were brought up, right? And we've even had to break that cycle in our own selves. But that old hard stoic i'm the man i'm the breadwinner i control i do all these things everything revolves around me and then i'm a martyr and i also sacrifice right that's the old way well what happened was that got victimized and then that got called quote unquote toxic masculinity that switched now all of a sudden this other generation this younger one younger than us has gone to the complete opposite side in a way to show people that they're not part of that old masculinity but they've gone so far that we have this feminized version of men now this middle of the road is gone because of the fact that one version of masculinity is so feminized that it's not even masculine and these guys are sad they're depressed they don't know who they are in life they don't know what it even means to be a man and then you have the polar opposite of the stoic the the harsh man that doesn't know what it's like to actually love and be happy and so this is where the dawn of masculinity comes in. This is where men need to honor and find out who they are so they can start to be authentic, not only with themselves, but with the masculine feature of this planet. Because we don't function well without both. Yeah. The, we need to embrace masculinity, not turn away from it. Right. Yeah, the the concept of polarity, right? The positive and the negative, the light and the dark, the male and the female, all this stuff. It's you need one so that makes the other better. And it, you can't be that much better if you don't have the other one, you know? And it's man and woman works well together. You know, batteries only work because there's a positive and a negative side to it. The sun is only awesome because we go through the nighttime. You know, there's all this, and I, I love that. And it's really interesting hearing you guys talk about getting back to to this. And the, one of the things that comes out of it is why do we even have to, which you kind of covered is that we've, the pendulum has swung so far to one side that it's swinging back to the other side. And, and we're always constantly striving for balance. Yeah. And I want to, let me jump in real quick, bro, on, um, we have taught historic. We've been taught historically that masculine energy, macho, tough, just grit and grind it out, and that that strength is from that command and control place. But, and this is a but, that's not true because real strength is when other people feel safe around you, not threatened by you. Mm. And so they're like the movie Batman when Bane uh, lays his hand upside down on that one guy's shoulder. He's like, I'm in control here. And he goes, puts his hand on his, uh, his collarbones. Like, do you feel in control? That is a great model of balanced masculinity. And I mean this by a, a weak person can't be gentle. Because all they can give is that weak, gen that, that, that weakness. A strong person can be gentle, like Bane laying his hand on them, knowing that putting the contrast, like, wow, this guy could crush me right now. But instead, he's he's intentionally put his hand gently on me, which causes that like alertness. So when we are strong, that's how we can be gentle. When we are in balance, that's how we can create safe space. But on that pendulum swing, either side, the effeminate man or the uber macho, like just, oh, I'm a fucking savage and like crushing beer cans on his head or whatever the, the image is of like the guy, whatever those are, neither make people feel safe. And every person on this planet, especially what we're watching right now, wants to feel safe. So the man who can integrate himself, know himself, hold space in himself, who makes other people feel safe, think of how much that heals in our world. Yeah, because everyone thirsts for community, right? Yeah. And community doesn't happen if there's no safety involved. You can't, yeah. you can't be in a community with someone who's, who you think might beat you to death every second or make fun yeah. of you or humiliate you because you don't want to be in community with that community right. is, is built around safety and comfort. Um, I love that. You know, it's really funny. I always, I always said one of the downfalls of human society was electric door locks. 
because this concept of like my my very first like mature car that I had was a 1988 Forerunner, but it had electric locks on it. And so therefore, you didn't have to lean over and unlock the door or walk around. I always said uh, I would never date a girl who wouldn't Mm -hmm. unlock the door for me from the inside after I let her in on her side first. And it's really interesting to see how this comes back into play here where you're talking about this uber masculinity versus this weak feminine masculinity. Because just because we are a man and we want to hold the the position of what it means to be a man doesn't mean we don't also want to be loved and doesn't mean we also don't want to be taken care of and doesn't mean that we also don't crave a gentle touch mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. so often it in life it is a or or mm-hmm. at least we've been taught that it's a or it's not an and I, I truly find it fascinating to a point where I'm at a little bit of a loss for words just because this is diving into a topic in which I wasn't even really prepared to. I knew that I wanted to advertise your guys' course on this and and because I want to support my fellow brothers, my community, my my blood brother and my <laughs> <laughs> my my blood brother uh in the in the field as well. But and with that being said, is like Man, this is not just one podcast episode. This is like a this is a podcast unto itself, a series. Just keep it going. So, what is the dawn of masculinity? What is this course? Because if a person finally identifies what it is that they want in their own life and they want freedom, they want sovereignty, they want to be liberated, they want to know what it means to have a soul and to live a soulful life. How how do you guys how are you supporting men in this? Johnny? You want me to take it? No, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, I'm take so, it, brother. Take um, it. You know, this is the thing is that, like, when I was in special operations, and I think I may have talked about this on the podcast episode I did with you, Johnny, but um, the when I was in special operations, we were so good at what we did because our base level of training was so high that when everything hit the fan, when everything was going chaotic, we resorted back to our lowest level of training. But our lowest level of training was so freaking high that we looked like freaking the elite soldiers that we were, right? This is where we're able to operate at a high level and that high level is literally just our base level of training. Mm. Well, for men, it's the same thing. And that's what we're doing with the dawn of masculinity. As men, we are only good. We are only as good as, as with as much as that we put into ourselves and train ourselves, right? So if you're not training yourself by constantly reading or assessing who you are as a man, what you're bringing to this world, what you're bringing to this, your family, to your friends, to your job, if you're not assessing that, then your base level of training is extremely low. Your base level of training, in fact, is literally what was basically taught to you from the ages of zero to eight, Mm -hmm. and pretty much maybe a little bit up until like 13, 14. But pretty much, your base level of training is so low, you've never taken the time to assess it and be at a high level. So when everything hits the fan in your life, you act like a complete jerk off, right? And you do that because your training sucks. And that's what the dawn of masculinity is. The dawn of masculinity is to start these men at the foundation, the foundation of what it is that they've gone through in their past. Obviously, Lucas being one of the foremost experts in um, past trauma healing, he is stepping up and leading guys in that. That is where we start. We start Mm -hmm. and attack what was gone, what has gone on in our past. And we do that to help build a strong foundation. Cause just like, you know, Johnny, you can't build a strong foundation without looking at that, right? Oh, man. So we take that. Yeah. Yeah. I just actually want to say something to this because I have, within the last couple of years of diving into my own self and investing in my own life and finding a passion in which I truly love, all of a sudden spurred on a passion to love to read, to gain knowledge. Mm. And being a school teacher in public education system, my one of the biggest downfalls that I will attribute to public education is this forced concept of you will read and you will read what we give you. Therefore, 
absolutely destroying the human soul thirst for knowledge. Because the minute that people are forced to read stuff that they do not like or they have no interest in or whatever, then they are like, I hate reading. Why do I want to pick up a book? (laughs) Why do I want to do this? And what you just said is in your military training is that when, when the chaos happens, you revert back to your former lowest level of training self. Well, Mm -hmm. when the chaos is happening in this world of 2020 and 2021 and lockdowns, masks, all this chaos, like what's true, mainstream media, all this nonsense is that people are reverting back to the, this old mindset. And if their old mindset is not grounded in knowing them or knowing what purpose they have and all this, they will not do the research to search for knowledge and information that is going to set themselves free. Because like you said, and it goes like with the second amendment and and people say, well, having a gun's great, but training with that gun is even better because the minute that you train with it, when the chaos does happen, you automatic, you don't fall forward, you fall back upon what you know in that, in that training. It's fascinating. Perfect. Perfectly said, brother. And that's where we're, that's where we're starting with men. We're starting with men at that foundational piece because we don't, Lucas and I both firmly do not believe that you can build yourself up without going to the ground, without going and doing the work at the ground level. So that's just where we start, but we build guys up and we take them through 12 weeks of not only starting there, but finding out who actually they're aligned with. Cause that's the other thing guys haven't even assessed what the heck kind of guy they want to show up like in this world. They're mm-hmm. just taking whatever was fed to them, but right. they, they wonder why they're unhappy and why their marriage is crap and why they're not a good father and all these things. You're, they're unhappy because they never looked at themselves in the mirror and said, how do I love this man? How do I show up as the man that I love every day? So we take them through some techniques to actually build that out and make a conscious choice as to what that man looks like. Then we connect that through synaptic wiring, through doing visualization. We connect it through the language that they speak to themselves. And then we actually start to compound tools for them. Each guy gets to start compounding tools so that he knows how to show up as that man every day forward in any situation that he knows that he won't have any shame, regret, or guilt because he knows he's honoring the man he chose to be in every situation. And that's where the the power in knowing who you are as a man is. That's where confidence lies. And that's where the new dawn of masculinity is that Lucas and I are teaching. And I would add to that, you know, John, you and I grew up where we'd hear, I only know one way and that's straight ahead. And I used to say that as like a joke, like I only know one way and that's straight ahead. And I remember like week one or two, <laughs> In therapy, the, the the therapist said the train will only go where the tracks lead it. So if you want to keep that narrative, oh, I only know one way that's straight ahead, then you're going to run into, you're not in control of your life. And I was like, wow. He said, freedom is being able to stop, pivot, assess, look around, and decide. But it is not being this like, I'm fucking, I'm going all the way. I'm just, that's how I just know one way and I grind it out and I'm going to get it like okay, yeah, you'll be alone. No one will want to be around you. You'll destroy every relationship you have. You'll wonder why no one is uh, good enough when it all is a reflection of the lack of healing, the lack of freedom, the lack of choice and sovereignty and embodying consciousness. And it's not, this is what I want to say to my brothers listening, you hunters, you beautiful men that are continuing this heritage of humans on this planet. If you feel uncomfortable about speaking about topics, but you have a vision of yourself as tough, you're not tough. (laughs) Tough Mm -hmm. is being able to speak about whatever, whenever, wherever, to whomever, about what, like, that's being strong. The facade in the body and like Mm -hmm. tough and that grit and that stoic, like I don't talk about things. Man, we're missing out on it's like the person that says the only sound that exists in all the universe is the sound that I can hear. But all of a sudden the dog whistle blows and the dogs all start barking. Are you going to tell the dog that that sound is not real? Of course it's real. It's like, mm. Anyway, go. Take I, I, I want to jump in here because the, 
tie, this is beautiful. Tying it into the concept of hunting. And this is why I really feel like hunting is, is ultimately the most impactful thing as, as a human that you could do. Because to become a better hunter, you have to have awareness of surroundings. Your mentality or what you said earlier is like, I only know one way and that's straight ahead. Well, if I see an animal on the other side of the hill and I'm like, dude, we're going to get it. Boom. We're, you're going to blow, blow the animal out. You're going to lose an opportunity. Sometimes in distance, an animal could only be a couple hundred yards away, but you got to go a couple miles out of the, out of the way to then be able to get into a position where you can capitalize on what you want. And I'm not mm. even saying killing an animal, what you want. So if we, if we take this concept of hunting and this concept of masculinity and identifying how we want to show up in the world, if you want to end your hunt quickly or if you want to end the joy in your life quickly, then continue doing what you're always doing. Because what the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So in order for you to be in control of your own train, you have to be able to c control where you lay your tracks as well. That's right. And, uh, and it's not about the easy way, the hard way, but it is about the way in which you truly believe and can support and you can defend in words and in actions. And I, I think it's it's truly fascinating how you guys are just like, this is beautiful, man. I can't believe if no one's listening to this podcast or if, it, or if one person's listening to this podcast, this thing needs to be shared and everyone needs to be signing up for this course because I don't understand how you can't want to make yourself a better human, a better person, a better, fa better father, brother, son, daughter, coworker, worker, hunter, whatever it is, like, do you want to be better? I do. And that's a, I mean, sign me up. So getting yeah. into, getting into this, how, how do people sign up for this course? What does it cost? And when you talk about cost, what is the cost of your freedom? What is the cost of your soul? What is the cost of you not feeling stuck with anxiety and stress and fear? And because that's really what you're talking about is liberating souls. So right. Uh, Luke, how much, how, talk, talk about the course. So the course is, is 12 weeks and it's, I lead a call, uh, on Tuesdays, Johnny leads a call on Thursdays and we go through an overarching, um, there's five modules that we're taking guys through. So starting off is, um, there's homework, there's videos. There's a lot of things that these guys, it's not like teach coaching it's live and then you don't get the assets. Everyone's going to get to keep what they developed in this course together, but they get a coaching call with me once a week. They get a coaching call with Johnny once a week. And then we have experts coming in and speaking on certain topic, uh, certain topics for each module. So powerful, powerful people coming in and bringing their perspective. So it's like a bonus material of, Hey, we've gone through this week's course. You've learned this. Now here's someone else bringing a different perspective that you get to uh, hear their content from. Um, so 12 weeks, two calls a week. Um, and then the cost is $1,500. So if you break that up and we do, we're taking payment plans. Guys can message us like the guy I talked to today. It's like, well, can I, do I have to pay it by the time the course starts? I said, absolutely not. Like we'll get this all set up and we'll get it worked out for you. I mean, it's I, last year alone, I spent $12,000 on personal development. The year before I spent like $30,000 on personal development. Like Johnny knows, like I can only speak like this and be like this because I've done the work it, and it, and all this stuff is not, that's why I say it's not like woo woo bumper stickers and, it's like rainbows. This is, this is the work. This is the real stuff. This is that now when I'm on calls with very, you know, where I used to be intimidated and have anxiety and I couldn't be able to speak. And I bring that energy into these meetings. I don't mean in the personal development world. I mean, in the corporate world and I bring that charge. Now I'm just holding space with people that are bigger than I've ever, you know, high up CVPs and all these people. I'm like, Talking to them like a human, being able to love them as a human and not as the title, the position. And guess what? I have professionally grown. Personally, my home life is finally peace. 
I'm, I'm the father I want to be. I'm the husband I want to be. I'm the man I want to be. I'm the most powerful person in my life that I know. And that's not to detract. From, every guy should be the most powerful person in their life that they know. They should. We all get to be our own heroes and not idolize anyone else. Like, oh, that guy's that. No, you're what you are. That you are what you think you are. It's just time to do the work to find out for yourself. Which goes back to my original statement of how I opened up this podcast where my brother Lucas is my hero. I get to be my own self. I get to stand yeah. in my own identity, in my own sovereignty, and yeah. know that there's no one else like Johnny Mac, and no one else is going to be able to do anything like Johnny Mac, or or be like Johnny Mac, or act like Johnny Mac, or show up. It list, The list goes on. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I, I love that. Uh, Johnny, you want to add anything to this about the course? Um, yeah, brother, just that, you know, everything, I reiterate everything that Lucas said and yeah, we're putting it out there at a freaking pretty nominal fee of like 1500 bucks. And when you break that out, if you did, if you started your payments in May, that's three, three months of only $500 payments, like telling me you can't, you can't scrape up 500 bucks a month, not even like a week. It's just a month to make that happen so that you can have this long lasting effects of being a better man in this world and actually finding happiness in yourself. If you, if you, if, if there's even a price tag on that, then don't show up. Cause I don't really want you there. I, I want <laughs> yeah, you to understand. Right. Like, I want you to understand that there's more of, I have more of a value in you guys becoming better men. And it, I can't be more invested in you than you are in yourself. That's right. That's right. And so that's where for me, this becomes something that, yeah, just like Lucas said, I've spent numbers of thousands of dollars on improving myself. And I didn't realize how important that was for a long time until I started to realize that I didn't have the tools to keep myself going at the Mm. level I wanted myself to be. And when I stepped into that, I finally realized that I was making a stupid decision to limit myself because of money but it limited my potential as a man in this planet. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart, that was probably one of the dumbest things I did in my life. Mm. And one of the best decisions I did in my life was to change that and actually see that I had a ton of value and I was willing to spend money on myself. I I just really, it blows my mind how simple and, and significant it is at the exact same time, because in the hunting world, Every, everyone knows if you, if you are a hunter spending good money on the best gear possible, you're always going to get the reward out of it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you can buy a hundred dollar rifle scope or you could buy a thousand dollar rifle scope. You're going to get the reward out of that thousand dollar rifle scope way more. And so if you're looking at yourself, like you're a budget human then you're only going to get budget results, mm. R- right? If, if, you, if you want to see ha- with clear vision the best world you've ever experienced, then you need to invest in yourself like you are the top dog that's worth investing in. Yeah. And I also want to talk about this concept of like, you know, so, so often people will grab a book going back to this book concept, because I, f- I find it extremely fascinating that they'll be like, oh, well, it's 500 pages. Oh, man, I don't know about that. Or the cover is not that good, or the font's bigger, or smaller. It's like, but what are you going to get out of the book? If yeah. that book mm-hmm. could single-handedly change your life, mm. would you not do it because of the amount of pages it has? Mm. or the lack of pictures it has. And and so, listeners, when you're hearing me talk about this, I've also invested a lot of money in myself, Not to, and it's not a competition. I have more work to do, and I'm still on my journey, and I'll always be on my journey. This podcast came out of me investing in myself. And if I never have taken that step, and, if, and think about if your life has been impacted through what I've shared on this podcast, it's only happened because I have invested in myself. Mm-hmm. And if you want your life to be changed, you're never going to get any positive result out of anything if you don't invest in yourself. 
whether it's diet, you invest in yourself because you want to eat better, because you want a better life, exercise, you know, getting out of a toxic work environment and go and pursue your passion and your love and, and whatever it is. Mm -hmm. If you are not taking care of your own tree, your own, your own self, you're never going to produce the fruit in the, this life that you want. Mm. So guys, everyone listen to this podcast. It's time to soul search. It's time to reflect because if you want a better life, it's time to start investing in yourself. Mm. There is no time like the present, and we're not guaranteed tomorrow. So, mm -hmm. guys, Johnny, Lucas, my brother, my brother and my brothers. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you for, well, for coming on this episode. I love you guys uh, tremendously. Thanks for having us, brother. Um, so where can people find information? How do they get a hold of you guys if they have questions about the course or, or the price or all this stuff? Or Johnny, go ahead and, and drop it first. Yeah, brother. Um, so first off, just thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to come on here and talk to your community. Um, I truly believe in the men in your community because anybody that's listening to you is obviously on his own journey and it's on a journey of of finding out who he is, but also on a journey of just listening to a great human put out some really, really good content. So thank you so much, brother, for giving us this opportunity. And I do value your community so much. Um, a lot of the guys that that follow me as well are hunters and veterans and, you know, former uh, cops or existing cops, firefighters, stuff like that. So I love the intermingling of both. Um, you can find both Lucas and I on IG. You can find me at johnny.lsasser. And you can find Lucas at Lucas James Mac. Um, you can email me too if you're if you're off if you're off the grid from social media. <laughs> shoot me an email. It's just Johnny at Johnny .com, and El Sasser is spelled E L S A S S E R. I will respond to you. Um, would love to just talk with you about it if you're interested. Uh, and even if it's not the right time, man, Lucas and I still want to be part of your guys' journey because we truly want men to start stepping into their power and positive masculinity and how they impact this world. So um, you can email me, you can find me on Instagram. And then Lucas, you got a webpage for us, right? Yeah, if you go, uh, if you want to just see more content about it, it's lucasmack.com slash course. Very simple, lucasmack.com slash course. And you can find info there and you can you can fill out the form and um, we'll get that email. We can hop on a call or, you know, the quickest way I think is Instagram or email Johnny or and fill that form out. So one way or the other, we got you covered. <laughs> I love it. And, and so just to, I, I'm taking some words out of a podcast from the golden rule revolution where you were talking with, uh, with the lady, I don't remember her name, but we're the concept of freedom, right? If, it, do I'm asking you listeners right now, do you want freedom in your life? Do you want to be free? Because freedom requires a cost. Yeah. There's always a cost to pay for freedom. Yeah. And so if you want freedom for your soul, or if you've never even considered the concept of freedom for your soul, now's the time. Right. Now's the time. And by the way, if you have not checked out the Art of Masculinity podcast or, this, or uh, the Golden Rule Revolution, I 100% recommend it. Your life is going to be impacted and transformed because these are brothers in the community where they are transforming lives. Mm. And so just going along with the Soulful Hunter, we are in the, the community of transforming lives through primal adventure. I really hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Thanks for tuning in. For more information, check out the show notes, and I will be catching you on the next episode. As always, everybody, freedom on and stay soulful. If you enjoyed today's podcast, I'd love it if you could go ahead and give this a rating as well as subscribe. Also, you can check us out on Instagram under the Soulful Hunter podcast. Make sure to tag us in pictures and posts and use the hashtag Soulful Hunter. To find out more about the Soulful Hunter podcast, go to soulfulhunter.com and be sure to follow the podcast as we are going to be bringing you a lot of great information, insight, and changing lives through Primal Adventure. I look forward to connecting with you on the next episode. Stay tuned and stay soulful.